Good morning guys, it's February 15th and today we're going to be talking about how I make my YouTube videos. But before we do that, have you guys ever seen those TikToks or IG reels where they're like, show me your setup before you clean it or whatever, like it's really messy, right? So yeah, this is kind of how <laughs> my room is right now. It is a complete mess. So let's go ahead and clean this place up real quick and then we'll get into the meat of this video, which is how I make my YouTube videos. Let's get it. Oh, and side note and why my productivity setup is a complete mess. This is from Valentine's Day. Thank you to my baby for sending this out to me. She's all the way in Rome right now. So for her to send this out to me was just really amazing. And we had a great day yesterday. So yeah, but now it's time to clean this up because it's all over my desk. Ugh. <laughs> she doesn't like being on the camera. <laughs> Yes, in the vlog. Where are you at? I'm in Rome. Look at these flowers that Wade got for me. Yeah. Valentine's Day. Woo. Okay, say bye. <laughs> Basic, ain't no Peter McKinnon like. All right, so starting off this video, what I wanna talk about in terms of how I make my YouTube video might not work for you guys, but in a general sense, it's kind of how I started. So it might work out for people who are going into YouTube. Yeah, hopefully you guys find something useful in this video. But let's start off with how I plan everything. So usually when I am making my YouTube videos, it doesn't just come up like, oh, I wanna make this video right away. I usually have a plan prior to shooting. Before it wasn't like that, it was a whole mess. So it would take hours, even days to shoot a video just because I couldn't put my ideas into paper or I just couldn't execute on them if that makes any sense. So what I would do now is that I would obviously get some recommendations from people to make videos or I just think of something out of nowhere like this video for example talking about how I make my YouTube videos and I would actually put it on a notepad uh, for me I use Notion before that I use my notes app on my iPhone I use Notion now and I, I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that I just love using Notion and I just put it in a script uh, template that I actually got from Ryan Cow uh, he's a really cool youtuber but he has this really cool template for Notion and I use that and I write my whole script on there or just dot my ideas and that's how it usually starts and when I feel confident enough like oh this is good enough for me to start recording then I bring it on to the camera and I try to like memorize the key points and then start talking to you guys. What actually helps me out is before I shoot my videos, I usually take a shower. I actually rehearse what I need to say in the shower because it's kind of a thing that I've been using as a mental thing when I was back in like high school. When I took some AP classes or whatnot, I, before my big quizzes or tests, I would actually take a hot shower and try to memorize things that I read overnight from the textbook or whatnot. And that usually helps me out pretty well and that's kind of how I've been doing uh, this even not even just a shower or something like that. Uh, for example, when I'm driving, commuting from school back back and forth, I would rehearse uh, my lines or rehearse things or just think of ideas out of this one and just try to talk and see how it would sound if, if it sounds stupid or not. Nobody's gonna hear it, it's just gonna be me. So yeah, that's some cool weird things that I would do to like try to rehearse YouTube ideas, YouTube videos. So I don't know if people do that. I, I think that's just something I do. But yeah, so once you get to the camera part, uh, this is where all the fun happens. When you go into making your YouTube videos, you really have to be comfortable and confident when talking to the camera. And it does take a lot of practice. When I first started making YouTube videos, oh my gosh, it was 
Oh, it was rough, very, very rough. I, I would literally give up if I just could not say a couple of lines. It's gonna take a couple of months to get comfortable talking to the camera, unless you're like supernatural and talented at, at like talking to the camera and go for it. Like, holy crap, you must be amazing at this. So I highly recommend making videos if you find that really easy. But when I started, oh my gosh, I did not want to talk to the camera. Uh, but now I'm very confident, even uh, with me, like I have a flippy screen now. Uh, back then, I did not have that luxury, so I, I did not know how it was looking, how uh, how I was appearing on camera. So, yeah, I, I guess that was a good training for me to go to this now, where I don't really need to look at this flippy screen. I only check if I'm still in focus or not. But uh, looking straight into the lens is a big thing when you are making your YouTube videos. So. Just a little word of advice for people who are getting into this. It's not going to be comfortable right away, but with a lot of practice and uh, just you know being confident in what you are talking about, it, it's going to go a long way into making your YouTube videos in the future. <sighs> Pretty good. Uh, I think I use pumpkin spice uh, from Starbucks, and then I also use uh, caramel with no sugar. So. Yeah, this tastes really good, holy crap. And I guess for the people out there who wants to know what I do, you know, use often when I'm making my videos, let's go over it real quick. All right, so this is the Godox SL60W. I literally bought this light when I first started like four years ago and it's been one of the best investments for me. I've been using this light every every day. So yeah, I, I use it just as a normal like light for my desk, but in general making videos or whatnot. I have a newer softbox, which is pretty cheap. You can get for like 30 bucks. All right, so the main camera I'm using is the Sony a7S III. It is currently rigged up right now. Again, I do make videos professionally, and this is just how it looks. Before I got this rig, it was just the camera, the lens, and the tripod. Uh, the tripod I'm using is this KNF tripod. They did send this over to me a while back, and I've been using it literally every day. Beautiful tripod, it has a lot of cool features. I can go vertical mount, I can go overhead, all that stuff, it gets really high and it's very sturdy. Love it, has a built-in monopod. I don't know, there's so many features on this track, but I love it. I just have a, a quick release plate over here that I attached on it and I use it with my main rig and it carries it really, really well. Next camera I use is the Sony a6300. I don't use it too often nowadays. I kind of want to set up as an overhead camera eventually. So right now it is with the Tamron 17 to 28. And this is usually how my streaming camera would be, but I do have a brand new streaming camera, which I'll talk about in a second. But this lens usually goes with my a7S III as well. I just interchange them here and there. Uh, but in terms of that new streaming camera and also my new vlogging camera, this is the Sony ZV-1. Beautiful camera, lightweight, love it. It's a one inch sensor Sony camera and this is how I've been recording this whole day of content. So I really, really like this camera. It has all the Sony features that I usually enjoy uh, and I'm gonna be using it as my streaming camera just because it's so lightweight and I can go really, really wide with it. And it has a lot of range. So I can go into from like a 18 millimeter with the wide angle adapter to all the way to like 70 millimeters, which is really, really cool. All right, so the next thing that I use very often are these pocket lights from Pixel. This is the Pixel G3. When I turn them on, I think you guys have seen this with my keyboard video or whatnot, but it's a very nice light. It, it is bicolor and it is also RGB. Just very cool when you're like making little arrangements for your videos. You can change it to whatever you need to change it to. There are effects. You can control it with the app, all that stuff. I have three of them. Uh, and they do last for like over an hour and a half whenever I'm using and recording. I do recommend for people who are making YouTube videos to have at least one pocket light just because if you are making videos on the go or in weird situations where you can't necessarily get a big light like that, uh, this light is very, very useful. But yeah, really, really cool light. I definitely recommend this if you are going into YouTube. It's one of those things that you just need to get. It's like 50 bucks. I think it's not that bad if you're trying to make videos. So yeah, cool light. And last but not least, this is my M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro. That's a lot to say, but this is my main editing laptop. I've completely switched over to MacBook for editing uh, in the past couple of months. And I do use Adobe Premiere Pro. This is an overkill laptop. You do not need this to make YouTube videos. You can even use your phone these days to make YouTube videos. Uh, but the reason why I use this laptop is because I do make videos as my, my job. So I, I just need a really, really fast editing machine. Before this, I was using the M1 MacBook Air and my PC rig, uh, but it does choke a lot on my A7S III footage. So I got something that does not choke at all. I don't need to do any proxies. It just does it. and doesn't complain so yeah I've edited so many new projects so much faster than before and I really really love 
uh, this MacBook Pro. I can't talk about it enough. It's just so, so good. And fun fact, I got this laptop for $3,200, $300 under retail, which was amazing. Thank you, Dwight, for selling this to me. It was literally out of stock everywhere. You cannot get it in Best Buy. You cannot get it in Apple Store. And uh, I mean, I was going to pay even more if I was going to buy it on the market. So yeah, somehow I got it on Facebook Marketplace for way cheaper. Uh, thank you again, Dwight, for letting this uh, go to me. So yeah, really, really appreciate it, man. I told you I was going to give you a shout out. So yeah, shout out to you, bro. Thank you so much for this laptop. It has been a game changer. All right, so let's stop talking about gear now and let's talk about editing. I don't want to go too crazy on editing just because it does take a lot of time to go detail for detail on editing. I'm just going to talk about things that people have been asking me, uh, especially when I am making videos. So let's start off with the biggest question when I'm editing videos. Where do I get my music? I do get all my music from Epidemic Sound. I have paid monthly for Epidemic Sound for the last like, I don't know, two and a half years. I've used Musicbed and Artlist before, uh, but I ended up just staying with Epidemic Sound just because it has a really, really great catalog and it's just really easy to use. And what's cool is that uh, I don't think any other platforms does this, but Epidemic Sound curates a whole like playlist of music that you have not listened to before and it's based off what you've been downloading and what you've been using for your YouTube videos. I don't know if that's a specific feature from them, but that's what I've been using. Every time I open up Epidemic Sound, there's brand new music for me and it says based on your YouTube channel, which is really, really cool. Again, I'm not sponsored by Epidemic Sound. I've just been using them for the last two and a half years. Uh, again, it's just a really cool spot to get music for YouTube videos. All right, so now we're at the part where we're actually gonna be using a thumbnail to upload to your videos. So for me, I actually use a screen grab from my video timeline, which is sharp. I do record in 4K, so it helps out a lot. But if you don't, I just recommend to taking some photos of what you're actually talking about, the subject, or for example, when I'm making my room makeover videos, I just take a wide photo of my whole room, which helps out a lot. And I don't put a lot of text. Sometimes I do just a tiny bit. I don't know, it's just not my style to be using a lot of massive text. I tried that before, it just didn't work. People didn't click on it. And that's the biggest thing when you're doing this whole YouTube thing is that you want people to click your video. And if you don't have a cool thumbnail, people will not click your video. It's just, it's just a fact. And if people are not clicking your videos, YouTube will not recommend your video. So yeah, try to get a very nice thumbnail that you personally would click on. Try to actually even test it out with your family members or your friends. Like, hey, would you click on this thumbnail? And if they do, then yeah, that's definitely a thumbnail to use. I usually have a community update in the community part of your YouTube channel and like tell them like a day or two days prior, like, hey, there is a YouTube video that's gonna be uploading at this day, at this time. It helps out a lot so people know like there is a video coming. But yeah, that's just how I do it. I set that reminder on the community tab and tell everybody, hey, there's a video coming out on Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern time. So yeah, that's just how it is. You do that and then you upload the video um, and then you wait you wait and you wait and it goes up and people watch it and you're like whoa whoa they're commenting they're like what the frick they love the video yeah that should conclude this whole tutorial i guess of how i make my youtube videos or how you should try to make your youtube videos uh, again these are just my opinions my tips and how i've experienced youtube and, and again i'm very very new to this still i'm still learning this is like it's still crazy to me that people are watching my videos which is amazing but uh, yeah, that's just stuff that I wanted to get out of my chest because it was in there. I just wanted to help you guys out. And yeah, that's it for this video, guys. If you guys did enjoy, hit that like button. Subscribe for more. I'll see you guys later. Peace.